I'm Nadia Ely, and welcome to today's discussion around grid resiliency and its impact on Dominion Energy's grid transformation plan, which aims to safely, reliably, and affordably shore up and improve our existing infrastructure and systems to equip them for the grid of the future. The series explores the various grid resiliency initiatives that play a role in making up the greater GTP. Two of those programs are the Voltage Optimization Initiative and AMI Smart Meters. To educate us on the significance of these initiatives, our Manager of Meter Solutions, Robin Massanopel, Voltage Optimization Program Manager, Stephanie Malheim, and Technical Coordinator, Ryan Christian. Thank you for being with me. Stephanie, I'm gonna start with you. Please tell us what voltage optimization is and how it contributes to the overall success of the grid transformation plan. Sure, Nadia, thank you for the question and for having us here today. Um, so voltage optimization is a newer approved GTP program, so part of our grid transformation plan. You'll hear me refer to it as VO for short. It's a demand side management program with a goal to achieve an average 1% energy savings across the distribution system through voltage regulation. For the company, achieving these targets will help us meet the energy efficiency standards that were established as part of the Virginia Clean Economy Act. For our external customers, optimizing voltage levels will ultimately result in lower energy consumption for most of the customers across our system. We're currently in the prep phases where we have contractors on the system doing preliminary construction and design work to ensure our system is ready to support our VO efforts once they're fully enabled. We started the design and construction efforts in four of our local offices in the summer of 2022. And by the end of the year, we had already identified nearly 5,000 customers with opportunities and completed the design and construction efforts to 145 of those customers. Our efforts will continue across the remainder of the Virginia Service Territory over the next several years. In parallel to our field efforts, we're working on software upgrades that are necessary in order for us to send the commands to raise and lower the voltages in the field for full VO enablement. These efforts are expected to be completed in the third quarter of 2023. Thank you, Stephanie. Have you had any customer feedback at this point, or is it kind of too early in the project to tell? We really have not had much customer feedback. I've had a couple of calls just kind of asking some questions about what it is and making sure that they understand it and how it might impact or interact with some of our other programs. But aside from that, it's been really quiet on the customer communication side of things. Thank you. Ryan, as these projects, Stephanie mentioned, become more plentiful, what types of challenges do you anticipate or are you already seeing in the field and how are you mitigating them? Thanks, Nadia, and thanks for having me here. I think with these type of projects, what we're noticing is they are very high volume projects and the work our group is doing is going to impact multiple customers. The data that we're obtaining from our AMI meters is showing us where businesses and homes are receiving less than optimal voltages. So to increase the voltages to these customers, we're having to come up with creative solutions to address those problems while still being mindful of our supply chain constraints. A lot of these situations where it be where installing a new transformer may be the only solution, but in most cases, we are pushing to come up with new wire solutions. And we are very cognizant of the fact that COVID did change the landscape of a lot of people working from home. So being actively in communication with our customers has been really important so that we can ensure that we're not disrupting their work, in their day-to-day -day lives. So providing customers with advance notice of the work taking place in their areas, as well as speaking with them directly days in advance or week in advance has been really integral in making sure that this program has been effective and working efficiently. Thanks, Ryan. Switching gears just a bit, Robin, I'm gonna turn to you now and ask you what the long-term benefits of AMI smart meters are to our customers, the company, and to the GTP as a whole. Sure thing, Nadia, thank you for asking. So smart meters have many benefits. With smart meters, we are able to have real-time two-way communication with our electric meters across our footprint. We can read them, reprogram them, and turn them on and off without sending a technician to the location to perform these functions, which was necessary with our legacy metering systems. 
In addition to these remote capabilities, we're able to collect a lot more information from these meters, including not just detailed energy usage data throughout the day, rather than just one reading month. Um, this is valuable for more advanced rate structures, such as our off-peak plan, but we can also, oh, um, sorry, advanced rates help our customers save money by shifting electricity usage to off-peak time periods, such as overnight, when electricity is cheaper. And this also helps Dominion avoid building additional generation for an ever-increasing peak demand. Again, avoiding costs, which can be passed along to our customers. But beyond energy usage data, smart meters also notify us when certain things occur at the premise, such as power outages or excessive load or wiring issues. We also collect information to identify other grid situations, such as the voltage fluctuations or power quality issues. This information helps us better manage our grid, which is increasingly important with the proliferation of variable renewable energy resources such as solar and wind, and is foundational to many of the grid transformation projects, including voltage optimization. Thank you, Robin. And could you just very quickly, for those who don't know, give us the relationship between AMI smart meters and voltage optimization? Absolutely. Yeah, the smart meters, as I just said, collect voltage information at each and every premise, each and every home or business. Um, we're currently collecting a voltage reading every 15 minutes. And so that voltage data is passed over to the voltage optimization team who can do analysis on the data and determine where we have customers that need um, line work done in order to bring their voltage uh, that we're delivering into compliance or into the bandwidth we want the voltage to be in. Um, and so once we get everybody within the bandwidth where we want them to be on a circuit, we can lower the voltage going to the entire circuit, which is where the money savings starts. Stephanie, did I get that pretty close? Yeah, and just to add a little where we don't need to make any changes and we have the opportunity to reduce the voltages as well, where we didn't have that information available to us previously. Thank you both. I really appreciate that. Now, this last question speaks to everyone on the panel here today. What does success look like for both the Voltage Optimization Initiative and the rollout of AMI smart meters? Robin, would you like to start? Success for the rollout of smart meters looks like a smart meter at every premise installed safely by the end of 2024. It's likely there will be some hard to access locations as well as some other complex installations that'll go beyond the end of next year, but we are working hard to meet this goal. And beyond the safe installation of smart meters for every customer, success looks like getting the most out of this investment in smart meters, including enabling the voltage optimization program that Stephanie and Ryan are heading. It's a couple of things. Um, the obvious answer, of course, is being successful in achieving at least our targeted 1% energy savings or greater. But it's more than that. Because we rely on the data coming from the AMI meters in order to support our VO program for both the prep work and the ongoing day-to-day -day monitoring, to that point, success is a great partnership between all of the business units involved in making the program a success, including it AMI, but also some other business partners like IT and the construction and the operations departments, where together we all collectively can work together to achieve the company's overall GTP program goals. I agree completely with both Stephanie and Robin. Safe installation of all the smart meters is going to be integral in ensuring the VO enablement. And VO needs to be able to efficiently address all the customers who aren't receiving the ideal voltage to their meters. Ultimately, VO will need to continue to analyze and monitor all the data we receive, especially during these peak loads to ensure we're meeting the expectations of the GTP as well as our customers. Thank you all for showing us a small glimpse as to how all of these pieces fit together. Any final thoughts, Robin, Stephanie, or Ryan, that you'd like to drive home? As a final point, I'll just mention that we did spend a lot of time and effort with to provide some customer resources and employee resources out on the DominionEnergy.com website. 
where there's a Q&A section for a lot of our grid transformation programs and specifically for our voltage optimization program. I'd like to thank Stephanie, Robin, and Ryan for their expertise and participation. Learn more about grid resiliency and the grid transformation plan at dominionenergy.com slash grid improvement projects. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for future episodes as we examine each of these programs more closely. I'm Nadia Ely.